Привет, друзья! Рядом со мной находится Райан Пелдаковский. Это финский чемпион и чемпион мира и в ружье, и блестящих карабинных стрелок. И регулярно входит в топ мировых стрелков по карабину в открытом классе. Для того, чтобы увидеть перевод на русский язык, нажмите на кнопку субтитров в правом нижнем углу. You went through two championship and uh, achieved great success. You on top two. I had my talks in Russia and then in Sweden I forgot some targets. So it a little unlucky always. What's the difference between two championship in Russia and in... Uh... Quite different, of course. Uh, in, in Russia, the base where it was built shooting range, so everything was uh, easy in that sense. Um, It was accessible for every shooter to go there and to measure distances with the rangefinder and to study the stages. Uh, in Sweden, things were a little bit hidden in the forest, and which is not convenient for the shooters. And uh, so that that was a big difference. So I preferred the, the, the Russian match in that sense much much better. On the other hand, the forest uh, was nice scenery to shoot. Yeah, but it was not uh, fair in, in terms of studying the stages, not, not, in, not every stage. Most stages it didn't make any difference, but in some it did. Second time you, you are number two in the world. That's great for 99-99% of shooters, that's great success. But probably for you it's disappointing, or not? I mean, before the Moscow, I, uh, 10 years I won every rifle match I participated. Everyone, every single one. And now, uh, yeah, well, I just been a bit unlucky with that. So, so the, the, the same guys who, who who happen to be number one in Moscow and happen to be number one in Sweden, those are the only matches ever that they have win me. So, yeah, <laughs> but match is a match. I don't complain. That's fine. How you work with stress during the match? You can be very negative. It's like. A collecting and collecting that negativity. How you work with this kind of uh, well, negativity? I have to tell that the Swedish match start was horrible for me and I, I really was very negative and I have to deal with that. I have, have to deal and that, that was hard. And the reason is the very first stage the was the longest stage in, in, in the match and I forgot two targets. And it was a long run, 70-80 meters something in the forest And then I had to, you know, run all the way back, and um, I calculated afterwards. I, I would have won the stage without that mistake, and I lost about 47 points on that. So to start with that, being 47 points behind the competition was not a good start, because I know the competition is tough. So, and, and, and then the next stage, probably because I was already on the bad mood, the very first shot, I had a mic. And the third stage, I also had a mic. So having three first stages, I was almost 100 points behind, like 80 points behind. This is the worst case be. scenario. That was the worst possible start for any match, let alone world championship. So, so I had some uh, struggle to, to gear up myself, but I think I managed quite well. Yeah, you did. How? <laughs> Um, Self-control, discipline, discipline shooting, okay, I'm just gonna concentrate on one thing at a time. And I was confident, I was confident that I can do it. And the confidence helps to a certain point, and in this case it helped to everybody else except uh, Jarko Lalkia, because I know he's my best friend in the shooting community. And um, I know him very well, and he's in such level that with him you cannot make such a mistake. If he don't, doesn't make similar mistake, there's no way to catch him. But I tried all the way to the end. Last day, six stages, I won five of them, and he got one. So I was really pushing hard, but it just wasn't enough this time. Any secret with this psychological working? Mm. Probably not. It just uh, you just need to have the feeling about it, and and in the beginning it's hard. You must get the feeling of you can make it, even though you're still far away from that. When I start from so much behind, I have to catch up slowly. Okay, when we were 
starting the last day I was third. So then I knew, okay, this is it. But but before you there, yeah, you just have to believe in what you can do and and to be very um, self control and discipline on your own technique that that you just do the right thing. What distance you better to zero the site? I have my uh, zero at 100 meters normally, but from there I dial according to the distance which is on every stage. But um, my zero point is 100 meters, but <coughs> I always check it at 300. So so I must be sure that the long distance is correct and then it's easier to come down. But then I calculate everything based on 100 meters. Why? Um, I use a Strelo program for that. Uh, it's That's the basis for everything. And then I use different ammunition. And uh, I found a very nice combination on my latest. And I try to find always a position of compensator and, and everything so that my main ammo shoots very close to each other. And I managed to find such combination that 51 Craner and 69 Craner shoots one centimeter off each other at 100 meters. So it was pretty perfect in Sweden. What gun you have, what the length of the barrel, what ammo you use and what scope you use? My gear now in the latest 12 shoot in Sweden uh, was uh, Lapu ammunition. I use 69 crane factory ammo and then I had handmade ammo for closer distance 51 crane Lapua bullet with Vihtavori powder. Uh, N130 powder or sometimes N130, 133. Uh, Lapua case, of course, very good. Uh, that's about the ammunition. Uh, for my, my scope is Swarovski uh, and uh, Z128 uh, is it's perfect uh, with ballistic turret so I can easily dial uh, the distance that I want. Uh, and my rifle is, uh, has been ADC as a basis. A uh, little tuning, of course. Um, you know, regarding the buffer system and uh, the barrel I have very special. It's handmade uh, bench rest barrel made in Finland which is very good. Only two such exist in the world and it's extremely accurate so I will never change it. What is the late and how many shots it can survive? Uh, I have now 6700 rounds and it's still shooting 10 millimeter groups at 100 meters. 20 inch barrel, yeah. Why not shorter? No, I always had a long one, so uh, it's a little bit easier to have long barrel to, to build the gun which is good to shoot. So I mean the recoil control to start manipulating the compensator. Is the reason to have a second sight, like a red dot sight on 50 or 45 degrees? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, of course, but I never had and I don't think it's necessary at all. You don't really need a second side at all. Scope is good enough. This, it's very rare occasion that you could gain advantage with that. But I, like I said, I've never used a second side and I've been quite successful without it. And I have seen a lot of shooters have it, but actually they are doing worse with secondary side. They cannot use it, but they try to use it because they have it. So I think most shooters, which means 99.9% .9 of shooters, would do better without it. I'm convinced about that. Interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, do you need a second bipod? Yes, of course. Uh, with, with the present rules, yeah, actually, um, present rules, which I'm not very happy about, with, with, that you can use any bipod, just improvise per stage, that's not being very good. Um, but to have two pipes, yes, yes. In, in some case, you, you need the, the safari, let's say like a kneeling position pipe, the height and, and then prone. So at the moment, yes, you need two. Is it a good idea to shoot using a magazine as a bipod? Uh, I used on one stage, even in open, yes. But if, if the space is tight, yes. In Sweden, I used it on one stage quite successfully. Yeah. Probably it's connected with the amount of efforts or and training you have. How many training you have in the in one month? I mean, I don't know what the one month training. I try to shoot uh, 
as much as possible, which means like every day if I have a chance. Um, for this match, I shot 45,000 rounds altogether before the road shoot. Not everything with, with the rifle, I had some pistol, I picked the pistol again after many years of break. Because of next year world shoot, I'm gonna shoot the pistol in Thailand. But uh, altogether, all, all the shots were about 45,000 before. How many shots you make in your life, approximately? Over half a million, yes. How, when you start your career as a shooter and when you start to shoot actually in your life? Well, I started shooting uh, pretty small, uh, 10, 11, something, with my, my uncle's uh, air rifle. My grandfather bought me a pistol when I was 14. And then I started seriously shooting in a garage, you know, very old-fashioned thing, but that was fun. And at 15, I bought my first two pistol, uh, Russian Margolin. I still have it. That is a very good gun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, slowly by slowly. Then I had a CZ when I was 16, first 9mm and so on. In Finland, it was uh, quite easy to obtain gun licenses with the permission of the parents. And first practical match, uh, 1989, so 30 years ago. And so little by little. Why Finnish shooters are so successful in the world? It is because of internal competition. Before I started winning matches, like, then I, I was second many times. So I had to compete hard and practice very hard to become number one. And after that, then once you reach a certain level, then it's easy to win because the others are not on that level. And then the others have to work very hard to get there. So there's always somebody to, to look at and somebody which, who, whom they try to catch. So that's where it comes from. And uh, for like 10, 15 years, it was me. And now, a couple of times, somebody catch me already, so that's, that's life. <laughs> You're motivated or you disappointed? No, I'm motivated, no problem with that. I'm going seriously for pistol. So when I got home from Sweden, I was three days, no shooting, and then I took my 2-2 pistol and went into a range. Woke up five o'clock in the morning, go to uh, shoot before office. You try to make your training cheaper with any kind of ammo for like 22? Well, I'm uh, lucky enough to have uh, ammo sponsorship, so that doesn't make any difference. How make it cheaper for uh, beginners? Tutu. That is absolutely the best. And especially talking about rifle, you don't need to shoot two to three. Actually, you learn better when you shoot smaller guns. So Tutu is very good. It's cheaper, at least in, in, in most countries, much cheaper ammunition, and uh, it's so much easier. What about limitation for the distance? Uh, you don't need to practice such a long distance as when, when you talk about basic shooting. Of course, for the prone position and, and long distance shooting, you, you must have a 2 to 3 But majority of uh, normal techniques that you need uh, on stage, you can practice with Tutu. Is it problem the different character of the recoil? Actually, Tutu and Tutu 3 are quite similar. So when when the match gun Tutu 3 is very well made technically, the recoil is so small, Tutu is very similar. Uh, Nine mm PCC that kicks harder, much harder. If you have to pick only one gun for your life, for your competition, for your hunting, for everything. Uh, which gun it is? Is it a shotgun, rifle, handgun, mini rifle, 990 rifle? It would be rifle. It would be rifle, yes. Well, with, with rifle you can do a lot more than with anything else. And uh, let's say like pistol shooting skills in Finland is completely useless. It's, it's only for fun. Rifle, you can do hunting and uh, so on, so that has some purpose. A shotgun also has a purpose, but it's limited. So rifle would be the one. Can you hit a duck at the distance about 85 meters in flying with the rifle? Of course not, of course not. And, and uh, it's not very safe to shoot in the air with the rifle, so I wouldn't even try. <laughs> But uh, then I just wait for the duck to land and see a safe spot with a good background and I'll shoot it on the water, no problem. <laughs> if I'm so hungry. <laughs> 
Друзья, возможно, вам интересны технические аспекты ружья или карабина, и у вас есть свои вопросы к одному из лучших стрелков мира. Райне любезно согласился ответить российским зрителям на вопросы в следующем интервью. Поэтому пишите в комментариях то, о чем бы вы хотели узнать.